In this video, we're going to look at parallel lines and their equations. This is going to build upon the previous video where we looked at the equation of a line. I'll put a link to that video in this video's description. If you haven't checked it out, I'd recommend you watch that one first and then come back to this video. In the previous video, we looked at the graphs of these four equations. Notice how all of these graphs have the same gradient of 2. When you draw the graphs, they look like this. You can see that the graphs of these equations all form parallel lines. None of those lines are ever going to meet or cross, and that is because they have the same gradient. So from this, we can tell that parallel lines have the same gradient. This is a useful fact that we can use to solve some problems. An exam question could say, show that the lines of equations y equals 3x minus 9 and 2y minus 6x equals 14 are parallel. We just said that parallel lines have the same gradient. So if we're going to show that these two lines are parallel, we just need to show they have the same gradient. So let's start with the first line, y equals 3x minus 9. This is in the correct form, y equals mx plus c, so the gradient's easy to spot, is this number here, which is 3. This line, however, is not in the form y equals mx plus c, so we need to do some rearrangement first. First of all, I'm going to add 6x to both sides. If you add it to the left, the negative 6x will cancel, so you just have 2y. And if you add it to the right, we've already got 14, and now we add 6x. So it's 14 plus 6x. Then we can divide both sides by 2. If you divide the left side by 2, 2y divided by 2 is just 1y, or y. On the right side, 14 divided by 2, that's 7, and 6x divided by 2 is 3x. Now we could reorder that right hand side, so it's y equals 3x plus 7. This is now in the form y equals mx plus c. And you can see that once again, this number here is the gradient, which is 3. So we've shown that both of these lines have the same gradient. You're probably best to write a concluding statement at the end of a question like this. So you may say, both lines have the same gradient, so they are parallel. Now let's try a second example. So for this one, we just have some different equations, but we're still trying to show they're parallel. So let's take the first equation, and you can see the gradient of this one is the number that's in front of the x, which is negative 2. So the gradient of this one is negative 2. But once again, this second equation requires some rearrangement. Let's first of all add 5 to both sides. On the left, this will cancel that negative 5, so we've still got 5y and plus 10x. And on the right, 0 plus 5 is 5. Then we could subtract 10x from both sides. So if you subtract it from the left, the positive 10x will cancel, so we've got 5y. And on the right, we've got 5, and then we subtract 10x. Now we can divide both sides by 5. 5y divided by 5 is just 1y. 5 divided by 5 is 1 and negative 10x divided by 5 is negative 2x. We can see that once again the gradient of this line is negative 2. So we write that concluding statement that both lines have the same gradient, so they are parallel. It works in the same way for showing lines are not parallel, you'll find that they don't have the same gradient. Sometimes we need to show that two lines are parallel, but we're only given some coordinates from the lines. For example, we could be told all four of these coordinates here, and we may be asked to show that AB is parallel to CD. So once again, we're going to use this fact that parallel lines have the same gradient. So if AB and CD are parallel, then we need to find the gradient of AB and the gradient of CD. To find the gradient when we have coordinates, we use this formula here. I'm going to start with the gradient of AB, so I'm going to label up its coordinates. Let's have A as the first point, so this 4 here will be x1, and this 4 will be y1. B is my second coordinate, so this 6 is x2, and the 12 is y2. We can now just substitute those numbers into the formula to work out the gradient. So for the gradient of line AB, we have y2, which is 12, subtract y1, which is 4. And this is over x2, which is 6, subtract x1, which is also 4. We can work this out by doing 12 subtract 4, well that's 8, and on the bottom 6 take 4, that's 2. So we have 8 over 2, which is 8 divided by 2, and 8 divided by 2 is 4. So we know the gradient of AB is 4, we need to show that the gradient of CD is also 4. So we'll use the same approach, we'll label the coordinates. This one here is x1, this negative 5 is y1, this 6 is x2, and this 15 is y2. And then we'll substitute those into the formula. So the gradient of CD is equal to y2, which is 15, subtract y1, which is negative 5, and this is over x2, which is 6, subtract x1, which is 1. On the top here, you need to be careful, you're subtracting a negative number, so this gives the same answer as 15 plus 5. 15 plus 5 is 20. On the bottom, 6 take 1, well that's 5, so we end up with 20 over 5. 20 divided by 5 is also 4. So we've been asked to show that they're parallel, so we can write that concluding statement again, 
Both lines have the same gradient, so they are parallel. Now let's try a second example of this type of question. So the question here is really similar, I've just changed the coordinates. So we'll begin with line AB. So if we label up the parts of the coordinates, we've got x1, y1, and x2, y2, and then the gradient of AB is going to equal y2, which is 1, subtract y1, which is 3. And this is over x2, which is 5, subtract x1, which is 1. So we do 1 take away 3, which is negative 2, and on the bottom 5 take away 1, which is 4. So we have negative 2 over 4. Well, 2 over 4 is just the same as a half, so this is negative 1 half. Now let's do the same thing for the line CD. So if we label the coordinates, and then we'll do the gradient of line CD, which is equal to y2, which is 1, subtract y1, which is negative 2, over x2, which is 2, subtract x1, which is 8. So on the top here, we've got 1 subtract negative 2. That's the same calculation as 1 add 2, and 1 add 2 is 3. On the bottom, 2 subtract 8 is negative 6. So we've got 3 over negative 6, which is once again equal to negative 1 half. So we can write that concluding statement. Both lines have the same gradient, so they are parallel. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next. Subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. And go and check out the exam questions in this video's description.